her expression. Same sort of thing. It, it, she's caught um, you. It, it allows you, as the viewer, to read into it hugely. You're you're completing the picture because I'm not defining every last bit, so you can sort of finish it off. And that's what I like about it. Um, and then I've got a couple over here where um, it's only the resin, and there there's nothing else there. There's no support. So if you look at this, and, and here I'm referencing uh, some wounding and, and, and surgery on, on earth here, and, and here the wound is opened up, so that's why it's called dehiscence, and there it's closed. But you can see how the resin has its own body, so, I mean, if you're casting these shadows, I mean, you can, the, the stuff, you can play with it, so it can be on a structural support, or it can just be free form on here, where it's just twirling around uh, this map of earth here. And then um, the last couple things done were um, this bud, where th this is basically integrating the resin into some real life forms. And you've got this uh, ill-described bud, this globe, but it has nothing on it yet, and mm -hmm. it's just growing out of this branch that was uh, broken off during one of the snowstorms. So I, I specifically wanted something that was, uh, you know, recycled by nature, possibly um, influenced by what we're doing in terms of that giant snowstorm. But it was just, it's caught right before it, it comes up. And so that's why you've got that covering there. Um, and this one, you can read into it lots of different ways. It certainly is a tree, three different ways. But and things to think about when you're looking at her are, are certainly uh, Damien Hurst and his, uh, his shark. So just a little bit altered mm -hmm. from, from that. But uh, you, know, you can put a tree in, in one of those resin boxes. Or else you can put a shark. So. Very ethereal looking. You know. Yes, the I mean, yeah. medium is definitely mysterious. Mm -hmm. That's what um, has attracted me to it. That you can, that you can just like float in there, and and it has a lot of depth. Um, when I look at old master paintings, I see tremendous depth because they have thirty layers of glaze. So with this resin, I can get a lot of this depth with one or two layers, and your eye just sort of sinks in there, and then the light just bounces back in different levels, because this stuff really is palpable. I mean, you can touch it, it <laughs> sticks up, it's gooey. Some of the painting I do, I've got, I wear two pairs of gloves, and I do a little finger painting. I mean, you know, just pushing this stuff around with my hand and two pairs of gloves, and that works as, as well as um, anything. Um, but it, it just, um, it, it's the lack of total definition which I really enjoy. And unlike watercolor, where it's pretty quick time, yes, has that same sort of you can't control, but it's fast. You don't have that much time. Um, Is anybody else doing this on the venue? No, oh. nobody's crazy enough. So, <laughs> um, <coughs> I mean, I know people have are, are trying, but it, you know it. Basically, it's taken me years of trial and error, just experimenting. Um, and mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in the laboratory doing experiments, so it was sort of a natural evolution when I stopped doing those experiments to do experiments in painting. Mm -hmm. So each painting is like its own individual experiment. That's why I try different things, because you know, the material, you can get it to do lots of different things. Easily, you know, just move in different directions. So, but um, yeah, it's a unique uh, material, and um, I like the fact that I can't quite win. That it, it's always going to be something I can't totally control, and that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. it makes it more interesting.